I that. completely reject the idea of, of institutional racism, specifically because there is absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing in which can hinder anyone from achieving anything within this country. I mean, for me, for instance, yes, I'm not a black person, but again, I'm more of a minority. And in my eyes, like many people, I believe that really focusing and scoping on this one issue really does take away um, take away the opportunity to speak about it on other issues for other minorities. Well, I believe. So this is that interesting. Me, Can I just? You said something really. Up. Hang on. You said something really, really um, challenging. I think for many people. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pick up on that. You said that you completely reject the idea of institutional racism. I, I'm really surprised because obviously we had the McPherson report after the murder of Stephen Lawrence reflecting on yep. institutional racism, in fact, defining yep. what institutional racism was and yep. then um, talking about that in terms of Metropolitan Police. We then had the yep. uh, Casey report in which she um, further extends the definition of institutional racism away from just race to homophobia and misogyny. We've just, in fact, in a few minutes' time, I'm going to be um, talking to our correspondent uh, about the comments made by Sir Ian Livingston um, of Police Scotland, who's now uh, leaving as the head of that force, where he mm. says his uh, force has been institutionally racist and there's a long way to go. So you've got a whole raft of experts saying, listen, yeah. um, in terms of policing, that which is just one example of an institution, but a very, very important one in this country, um, as being affected by institutional um, racism or, uh, in the case of the Met, misogyny and, and, and homophobia, and you still reject it? I still do. Reason is, I mean, like I said, we are much more progressed than we were. And make no mistake, there will always be that very small contingent of people who are by all means bigoted and who, are, and who do have very detrimental views when it comes to protecting minorities within the UK, uh, certainly especially with women, especially with sexism, uh, racism, homophobia and so on. But we know it's not and just again, a minority. They don't speak for the majority of the people. But and we they know don't it's not just a minority. Systems. We know it's not... How is it not the minority? Because what's your understanding of institutional racism, might I ask? Uh, essentially, an institution which is set up almost to directly or indirectly not allow people to progress. You know, I mean, I think it's by default that. The original definition, the McPherson definition, was talking about public services that mm. um, have structures, so similar to what you're saying, um, yeah. have structures within them that are set up to actually uh, fail members of ethnic minority groups um, uh, because they are so hindered by racism that they are not serving um, ethnic minorities um, because uh, they are racist, right? And that yeah. actually it becomes a way of thinking and acting and being for an institution to the point where people inside the institution are, are, are so taken up by the group thing that they're completely unable to challenge from within. And that's why it's incredibly important when you have independent assessors coming in and looking at institutions saying there is a problem here and we have taken evidence from a range of people and we don't have skin in the game, literally, that actually when they call out institutions for being institutionally racist, I am surprised when, when somebody likes I'm going to be honest, Alpha, when you call up and you say, I just don't believe it, I'm really, I'm really taken aback by that. Yeah, I, I also don't believe it as well, because in actual fact, it's the ethnic minorities in this country which have now become more successful than the white British people. That's not it's true. It's the ethnic minorities by which, which are more likely to By go, which metrics? Well, educationally first, let's begin with education, culturally. Uh, education, it's, it's Chinese kids, and I'll get the, the figures up, but and, broadly and, speaking, and it's Chinese it's, kids uh, and Indian kids. If you are a, if you are a, a, a Muslim, a Bangladeshi yeah. boy, you have some of the worst outcomes when it comes to education in this country. There is and still huge... The there is like still, there is still, still, they are a handful, and I would argue they are outliers. Really? Yeah, and I speak for myself. People the, look at me. People Muslim look at me, Arabs Alpha, well? and they will say, "You are a woman who is now sitting uh, talking to up to a million people on LVC." And I understand that they will turn around and they'll say, "There you go. That's evidence that there's no such thing as racism, and certainly not structural racism within society." And I will say, "How many more of us are there?" Precisely, many more. none. No, there aren't. Many. There is no other you... Asian woman like me working either on this radio station or elsewhere. That is not happening 
anywhere. So that's and, what I mean but, about I mean, there's, I there's, a, so, there's, there's a sociological the phenomena. Listen, identity. I would argue that there's social, sociological phenomena, which means you will always have outliers in any community who are going to be disproportionately successful. Does that mean that we should turn around and roll up the ladder from behind us? No, I think actually it's incumbent on us. I suspect you're probably a very successful person. It's, I believe it's incumbent on us, particularly ethnic minorities, to understand that, yes, we may well have been successful, but does it mean that other ethnic minority groups are being su- success as successful? Does it mean that other groups within our own ethnic mor- minority are as successful as us? And if the answer is no, then it's incumbent on us, I would say, to look thoroughly at both ourselves and society as a whole and figure out how to equalise it. Well, yes, that sounds very idealistic. The only thing is that who says that no one can be as successful as we are? Who says that? That you, you literally, quite literally, there is nothing stopping anyone in this country from working hard, really working hard. And I'm not criticizing anyone and saying potentially people don't work hard. I'm just saying that if everyone puts their head down, especially in my position, people of the same background to me, all of us ethnic minorities as well, if we all put our heads down and we all showcase the excellence in which we can bring, there will not be questions of institutional racism. But it's the fact that certain ideas such as institutional racism have really created this bubble around us and other ethnic minorities that make us think, well, to an extent, I believe that potentially I can't make it. And, well, what's the point? That's that's the issue here as well. That's another thing which I believe has um, sp- sp- sort of spanned out from institutional racism. It's It's the self... It's the self-induced mechanism where you don't believe you can be successful because everything is made to fail around you. And I completely reject that idea, completely. 